Greetings, greetings. Shop Talk Podcast. Greetings, greetings. I'm Norma Jo Thomas, and I am here with my favorite barber, Jamel Thomas, and we are at the historic Joe's Barbershop, right here in the historic African-American community of Acres Homes. Joe's Barbershop is the home of Shop Talk. The Shop Talk podcast celebrates the old school black barbershop, where there were conversations about just about everything relevant to the black community. Tune in to Shop Talk. But what we're getting ready to do is a tribute to my dad, Mr. Joseph Thomas. Mr. Joseph Thomas is um, the original owner and operator of Joe's Barbershop here in the Acres Homes community. And I like to say that he is actually the inspiration behind this podcast because when my dad passed on January 1st of 2022, and uh, my sisters and uh, two of my nephews and I were left with his barbershop. So the question is, how do we continue? But not just how do we continue the barbershop? How do we continue cutting heads in this building? But how do we continue his legacy? Because a legacy it is. He was a pillar of this community. And uh, everyone, everyone has felt his absence physically, but we want to make sure that his energy and his spirit stays alive and well in this community. So we're getting ready to pay tribute to him. And uh, again, like I said, we've got some motion and movement going on. There are people who I hope are coming on in the door. Come on in. As we you know, talk about the barbershop and as we talk about uh, daddy, who's papa to y'all, if you, I'm going to be asking you guys, you know, do you have a memory? of the barbershop or your memory of Papa that you want to share. Oh, I didn't mention that this is his birthday, which is why I decided to interrupt Mother's Day. I don't care about Mother's Day. I decided to interrupt Mother's Day with this tribute because this is his birthday, uh, May 12th. And uh, he would actually be 97 today. He would be 97 years old. So in just a couple of years, we're going to be celebrating uh, his, the hundredth mark that he would be making on this plane. Who is at the door? Come on in. 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 But if you could go around this way, and that way you don't have to cross over all of the wires and cables that are there. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna uh we're letting them come on in. I love it. I love it. We are live and we got all kinds of going on so here. Live and in, in action, right? Live and in living and color. Got, and this is a whole other kind of an energy in the barbershop. Why do my dad's? Because we got some young people up in here. Yes. Yes. Kicking up in here. We got right. some powerful young yes. people up in here. Yes. We, got, we got the barber with the mostest that's holding up. Joe's All right, Mr. J. Mail. We got we got Tishney and brother. What's your name? Brother Tishney Jimmy. Jimmy. They gonna be throwing down on some some uh we'll boards know. and and, <laughs> and then we got uh. Sean. Yeah, Sean. he's Deshaun is visiting uh, us from the from the Big D from the Big D. And then we got Asia. Oh yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, she just walked across that stage. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. This is some awesome energy up in here, and then just, just because I don't want to leave anybody out, but we got a whole nother crew of young people outside holding up the parking lot for us <laughs> to greet the people as they come in. <laughs> Coffrey's out there with some of his homeboys, you know, holding up the parking lot, making sure everything's going right. But we are um, super excited about what's going to happen here today. As uh, Sister Rawia said, uh, this is Mother's Day. So we do want to wish all mothers absolutely, absolutely. a happy Mother's Day. And we got a brand and, new mommy in the building. Yeah. This is our first Mother's Day. <laughs> this is her first Mother's Day teacher. That's why she's going to be hitting them, hitting them, hitting them words for us later. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but uh, and we also want to make sure that we know that 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 the responsibility of mother travels a long ways. It goes with aunties, cousins, big sisters, yes, godmothers. Uh, godmothers. We know that that travels a long way. I know my aunt, my aunts were very influential in my life. 
uh, and my grandmother was very influential in my life. So we understand that the role of motherhood does not just stop with the one that brought you into the world, but it continues in that family circle of harmony, right? Yes. Of love. And so that's that's a powerful thing. Before we go ahead and, <laughs> and uh, kick off this tribute, I want to make sure that I say, you know, we call, we've, not we, but I, I'm always coming up with something. So I have called this our martini shoot. This is our martini shoot because this is the last shoot of season one. And I cannot believe, well, yes, I can. I can believe, but you know, people say I can't believe, but I can believe that we made it this far. You know, the, the rule is that sometimes podcasts don't go past three episodes. Well, we have actually made it to 12 episodes. We have 12 episodes, but That's I awesome. would be remiss. Thank That's you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But I would be remiss if I did not say that I have the best darn DP in the whole wide world. Mr. Yeah, Nolan. And Nolan. Yes. And let me say this. Let me say this. If you are listening or viewing and you have some kind of idea for some reason that you're going to need a DP, you want somebody like Nolan. Nolan. Because if you know anything about me, if you've learned anything about me over these past 12 episodes is I come up with an idea. And I can't say I don't take the I don't take no for an answer is Absolutely my point, not. because that means I've already done the research. I've already figured it out. So there's really nothing you can tell me that it cannot happen. And that's what I love about Nolan. Nolan will say this can happen. This can't happen. This is the way we can do it. But at the at the end of the day, he says we're going to make it happen. We're going to make you, it happen. We're going to make, we're going to figure this thing out and it's going to work. So let me say right here in front of God and everybody, Nolan, thank you so much for yeah, agreeing Nolan. to be a part of this journey. And we made it. We are here. We are here. We've just put him not in, the, only, in the barbershop family, in the Joe's barbershop family. <laughs> and, and he, he actually kind of at the last minute, our last two episodes brought Mr. Justin yep. into the group. So Justin, yep. thank you so much for bringing in your uh, knowledge and expertise in this as well. So again, we are having our martini shoot today. Will we have martinis? No, but we might have some. We cake. should, huh, Tish? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, Tish, you should have brought her, the martinis with last. you. You should have brought the martinis with you. Maybe we'll go somewhere and have us a martini. But uh, because, yeah, this is um, the final shoot of the um, of the season. And following this season, I'm going to be doing what I'm calling uh, pod blasts. And I had a lady on the uh, Black podcast community the other day. She asked me, what is a pod blast? And I said, well, I'd like to say that I made that up, but I don't think I did. I think somebody else made it up. But it was in the energy field. So pod blast is after this season is done, I'm going to continue promoting the episodes because I know we have not found our audience. So audience, we are looking for you and we are coming for you. So I'm going to be doing some some snippets here and there about issues, news, and concerns that are relevant to the African American community. I am going to be highlighting <laughs> some pieces and some snippets, some clips from the season, from the twelve episodes. So I'm not going any place. But this is the end of our formal season of shooting video. And uh, as my sisters make their way on in, um, they're late but perfect timing because we're ready to kick off our tribute to Mr. Joseph Thomas. Yeah. And I think Nolan, you got a picture of uh, Joe the Barber. So as Nolan finds that image and brings it up for those of you who are viewing and you can get to see who this young old man is, was, will always be. It's up. Excellent. So that's my dad, Mr. Joseph Thomas. He is not only the progenitor of just about everybody sitting in this room, but he is also the inspiration behind this podcast. So we want to pay tribute to him today. Today is his birthday. And I think that this is a very fitting way to bring this season to a close. Just a little bit about him. Mr. Joseph Thomas was born in this little old town called Rosa, Louisiana. It's not even on the map anymore. And uh, what they called, uh, uh, what they call uh, high water, high waters came. And so his family had to migrate to Opelousa. So he's a backwoods Opelousa boy. And that's where he grew up, ended up going to the Navy. And he used to always tell us when we were kids that he was a French chef. <laughs> so we, we were trying to see, you know, and uh, there's a tribute over there. And um, 
hopefully if you take a look at the trailer, it caught my attention, <laughs> that uh, then you will see a little bit of the, um, the memorial that we've set up to him. But anyway, back on target. So he used to tell us that he was a French chef. And the reason he would say that he was a French chef was because he was in France and he was a chef. So that made him a French chef. Now, what was the truth in those days was in that day and time, black men were not um, typically sent out into, um, I don't even know the term for it, when you became a part of a battalion or something or a company and you were actually sent, but they were given jobs to do. They, you know, they, they transported um, goods. They, they cooked. So let me get to the point. They cooked. And that's what he was. He was a cook, but he was extremely good at it. So um, he became a chef. And so that's why he was always saying, I am a French chef. And he did introduce us to some dishes that he would say, you little country acres homes girls don't know anything about. And uh, he was the father of four daughters. When he re when our mom passed, he reared us by himself. Come on, sit down and stop wiping up off the chair. The chair has already been wiped off. Good thing we're alive because, you know, <laughs> we don't have to try to go back and fix anything. We can just go ahead and keep go ahead and have a seat. That's my sister, Mercedes. Joby. We call her Joby. But anyway, so yeah, so that's my dad from Louisiana, Navy man, came back to um, the States, spent some time in New Orleans with his family and friends, but uh, he heard about the GI Bill and he decided that he was going to be a barber. So many guys, he said, were going into tailoring. And, you know, back in the day, black folks went outside looking good. We sure. didn't go outside looking all kinds of which kind of ways. Sure. You know, we went outside. So it was no uh, surprising thing that so many of them were going into tailoring. But he decided mm, he was going to have to do something that everybody else wasn't selecting. So he said, I'm going to barber college. And I guess that was divine intervention because he found his place. And um, he became a barber and uh, had already transitioned from New Orleans and Orange, Texas to Fifth Ward. And, you know, I got to thinking one day, I think everybody in Houston that came from Louisiana just stopped at the first community they could find. And that had to have been <laughs> Fifth Ward. Ward. I don't know if it was, uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know what team. Galena Park was during those days, <laughs> but they just all stopped at Fifth Ward. But he heard about Acres Homes. And I'm so glad he did because I love uh, of me some Acres Homes. And this is where he established. And this barbershop in this particular location has been here at least almost 70 years because before he passed, we had counted up about 66 years. So we're now at almost 70 years at this location. But he did start at another barbershop up on West Montgomery, which was the, the business hub. Acres Homes had a very uh, thriving business hub. It was kind of like a mini Black Wall Street. And uh, he was part of a barbershop up there before he bought this property and began barbering here. So that is kind of like my real quick introduction to Joe the Barber. So now that my sister has joined me, and, and this is gonna be a question to everybody in the room. And um, so here's my question to you. What is your fondest memory? Not just of daddy or papa as some of you, or Mr. Joe, Joe the Barber, as some of you may call him, but um, what is your fondest memory of being with him here in the barbershop. And I'm gonna give you guys a couple of, I, I need the little music from uh, uh, the, the show, but um, to give you guys whatever that, that show is where you think about stuff. Do, 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 oh, do, do, do. You know, Jeopardy, Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Somebody, oh, you got your, okay, okay, all right. Is she, is she hot over there? Is her mic hot over there? So she can go ahead, okay, go ahead, Tishani. We used to come to the barbershop literally every day after school. And um, we used to like, you know, like brush the guys off to get tips and stuff like that. And uh, it used to be a store, like literally across the street. We used, we used to literally run through the woods mm -hmm. to get to the store. And by that time, now it was like a nickel, <laughs> literally. Me, Sean, Catherine Osiris, Queen, I mean, we are running like full <laughs> throttle out the door. Papa said, girl. If you want to slow down, you're going to throw a head first, deep ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. He was just like, if you don't slow down in this barbershop. <laughs> but yeah, that was it, man. That was and, and you know what's funny about that is by the time you came along, being a girl, and she was allowed to dust off customers. Yes. Like you remember, Joe, when we were kids, yeah. 
We came here every single day after school, but we weren't allowed to dust off the customers. And I was an adult when I understood why. Do you know why? Mm -mm, why? Daddy would not allow us to be in close proximity to men. Okay. He was yeah. that, that, you know, that's, that's that old school yeah. thinking little girls ain't got no business being that close to no grown men. Yeah. Now, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, big Chris, Yo, big cousins. Chris, Your and cousins. Jamel. They were yeah, qualified as men. They were, they, they were Your the cousins. cousins. Yeah, yeah by family. that time they yes. were barbers. Absolutely, yes. absolutely right. You're yes. absolutely right. And yeah. then he had gone through because by the time they came along, now of course being little boys, they were allowed to do all of that. They right. could, they could get the tips from the customers. I mean, I. I'm like, how come we can? And then the other guys, shine shoes, and, and oh, yeah, the, uh, they they did the shoe shining here. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I was in the airport uh, not too long ago. I guess I was coming from El Paso, and um, there was a shoe shine stand. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I want to stop and take a picture. But you know, there were people there getting their shoes shined. So I was like, okay, I don't know if I should, you know, take a picture of these people. But I thought because I wanted to kind of incorporate it into the imagery. Of the shop, you know, because mm -hmm. I yeah, there was the, the shoe shine here, the, uh, yeah, the shoe shine stand that um, you know, and I don't know why it always seemed like it had a step up. I guess because they, they had, had to, to have step yeah, up, yeah, yeah, they had to have the step up, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so we but well, we were allowed to sweep up some hair, weren't we? Oh yeah, we, we could sweep. we could come in here and sweep, mm -hmm. but we couldn't get those tips <laughs> dusting the people off. Anybody else? Tation back there. Tation back there. Come on up and, and uh, uh this is our graduate, just graduated from TSU on yesterday. <laughs> you late, you, you late, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know how I am. I have said Joe got said. Oh, sorry. No, you good, bro. Hello, everybody. You can um, <laughs> I just wanted to say, like, same thing with Tishney as a kid. I used to come here after school all the time. And I used to come in and every day. I would say, Papa, can I get a pickle? You got a dollar? No, I don't have a dollar. Go and get that pickle, girl. Go and get the pickle. <laughs> they, 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 they said, you come here. You need to have my dollar. Okay, I come there the next day. Papa, I have a pickle. You ain't got my dollar, huh? No, I do not have your dollar. Because <laughs> I'm gone, girl. Get your pickle. That was one of the best things. It was just coming in, always getting the pickle. And he knew I never had no dollar. Yeah. Never had a dollar. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you know he was counting those dollars, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know he was counting those dollars. Because that's one thing. I, I, I like to say that um, he was very frugal. Yeah. So he did not yeah. waste his money on anything. No, and and uh, even, you know, Uncle Duna, uh, Uncle Duna was actually on the first episode. I had him to come in and talk about his memories of being a barber here. And, and I think he really, really enjoyed being back in the barber shop. But he said that um, as much as they helped so many people in the community, people who would come in and maybe didn't really have enough for a haircut or mom had, you know, several kids and she only had enough for a couple of the kids and they would just cut their hair. They just did what they, whatever they, you know, could to help yeah, people, <laughs> you know, and, um, so sometimes, you know, people would come back and say, well, okay, Mr. Joe, well, here's your money. And sometimes he would say, oh, no, 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 go ahead and go. But there were those times he would say, okay, give me my money. Give me my money. <laughs> so he did not play about them dollars for the pickles. And if you see over in the memorial, that's why you see a jar of pickles. Yeah. And that's why you see, does anybody know what that other jar is? I can almost they, put a sign it? on it. Can, can you see the pink jar? Pickle, pig feet. pickle pig's feet. Just yeah. get on pickle your pig's feet. feet. <laughs> camera, okay, okay, Justin is going to pick it up there for it us. Is, My dad yeah. sold pickles, pickle pig's feet. There was always some chips. Uh, No, not right now. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, and uh, and the, the Boston so baked beans, and unfortunately, I hadn't been able to get anybody to break into the gumball machine for me to put the gumballs in there, and then there was the soda machine that was in that corner. So, uh, my Thank dad you, was Justin. very Thank enterprising. You. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. He was very enterprising. There was always something going on. Now, you guys are too young to remember, but he had a pool hall. Right, right in the same. Well, I don't know if this was the you know, daddy, he was also a, a master carpenter. <laughs> so, this <laughs> spit bubble gum and tape. And this building has been transformed numerous times, but there was a room because you know, my mom had the beauty shop. Yeah, now you guys are pointing that way. Our memory is this way because our mom had the beauty shop this way. 
her beauty shop was this way. Yes, yes. And then, and then the also table. back here was a pool table. And the guys would go back there and shoot pool. So there's, I mean, telling you, this space has been surrounded by every enterprise you could think of. Mm -hmm. You could think of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Uh, Norm, you were saying when you were talking about your, your, your father being frugal, you know, you talk about money. That's my thing. But I want to make sure that, you know, because a lot of time when we hear frugal, we think, you know, tight, <laughs> wide, this, that or another. But Mr. Thomas was very given. He gave to his family. And uh, he was always about helping his family get up, get up. And uh, but not only that, uh, we found out after he passed um, that he was a very cautious, conscious uh, financial person. And uh, he had multiple streams of income, which is what we teach today, multiple streams of income. And actually, he, let me just interrupt just for a second, because this we didn't find this. Well, maybe you found out after he passed. I don't know, but I, I'm sure I shared it with you. This was something that he told me uh, well mm -hmm. before he passed. But he right, was, before um, he passed. Yeah, but when he was not mobile. And so mm -hmm. we were there at the house with him. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of conversations. And, um, and he told me, he said, at one particular period of my life, I had... Uh, I say a mass, I can't remember the word that he used, but probably earned, he probably said something like earned, but he had uh, over a million dollars in assets. Right. And he said that, you know, that was, that was just his dream to build, to build his own way, to build his own life. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Um, just one of the funnest memories was that, uh, my papa was just always, um, like, yeah, you can oh, talk okay, into that yeah, one. That's okay. fine. Yeah, yeah no, nah, he just always, Angel, you have to move. But um, no, nah, he just always wanted to make sure that I knew how to make some money. You know, if I'm sitting here like, you ain't doing that, man, come sweep the floor, I'll give uh -huh. you a dollar. <laughs> come on, man, you ain't doing that, come wipe the dust off, help the man, get you some money. He's like, man, I just want to always make sure mm -hmm. you know how to make some money. Just go ahead and get you some money. He always wanted to make sure that I did have some in my pocket. And he said, like, if your hands ain't rough, you ain't been doing the man's job. <laughs> Get your hands dirty, man. Get your hands dirty. He just wanted just, you know, just bringing me up as a man to watch yeah. him cut hair. Yeah. Everybody come here. Definitely respected him. He was every known. You know, he was definitely, always known. Definitely. So I just, that's all I just wanted to say. Papa, well, I'm love glad you. you did. Happy birthday. And i see y'all tomorrow. Well, no. Next week. <laughs> I'm going to come back next week. I'll see y'all. Okay. I love okay. Y I love well, thanks, for, thanks for coming through, Deshaun. Thank you so much. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that... That the thing is that uh, uh, in in reference to what Tashan and Mayasa were saying, the barber shop was never the end all be all it all. There was always more, and not just at this location, but there were things that he did out in the community. He had houses, like I said, he was master carpenter, right? That he was building these houses up, and so he had property. He owned other businesses. He had a corner store. Uh, he always wanted to open a, a washeteria. Uh, he and my uncles, I think each one of them, all owned a, a, a nightclub. And but there was always food, place. I food always yeah, always, and was always selling hamburgers. But there was always <laughs> some kind of enterprise that was going on. On. And uh, what we're going to do is while we make this transition, my other sister's coming in, we're going to let them get settled over here. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our artistic impact for today. And she's not really doing an artistic impact today. She's just bringing us some of her own sounds and paying tribute to the energy and the spirit that is her great grandfather, Joe the Barber. So I'm going to um, let her go ahead and introduce herself and do her thing. <laughs> okay. Hi guys, I'm Tishani. Um, this is my guitarist, Jimmy Banks Jr. And we're just gonna give y'all a little upbeat melody right now. Is that All cool right. with y'all? That's right, good. Cool. Sounds okay. good to us. Okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, when I wake up in the morning, love, and the sunlight hurts my eyes, and something without warning, love, weighs heavy on my mind, mind, then I think of you. 
and the world's all right with me. Oh, just one look at you, you, and I know it's gonna be a lovely, lovely day. Lovely day, a lovely day, 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 yeah, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, day, day. When I wake up in the morning, love, and the sunlight hurts my eyes. And something without warning love. All right. It weighs heavy on my mind, mind. Then I look at you and the world's all right with me. Oh, just one look at you, you, you. And I know it's going to be. A lovely, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, oh, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, 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 day. Every day is better when I look at you. Every day is better cause I love you. Oh, every day is better cause I'm loving you. And it's gonna be a lovely, lovely day. A lovely, lovely day. Lovely day, a 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 lovely day. Lovely day, oh, lovely day, 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 day. Woo! Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, that's right. that's my great niece. Yes, thank y'all so much. I wish I'd been able to book y'all for a, a couple of hours. That was beautiful. So tell us where we can find your music, you can, Tish, and, and also introduce Brother Jimmy over here. This is Jimmy Banks Jr. on the strings. He's excellent at strings, electric guitar, acoustic guitar. Um, you can also find my music on uh, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Music, um, all the digital distribution places that okay. you can find. Okay. And Jimmy, what is your handle? Anything? Oh, Catch Me Until is my handle. And then my name on all the um, platforms is just Tishany, T-I-S-H-A-N-Y. All right. All right. Is that handle? Uh, no, more. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. It's okay. If you want Jimmy, you contact Tishany. There. There, 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 there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. Excellent. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so Thank much. Thank you. I think you still want to share. Right, Amelia? You ready to share? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us for this tribute. Go ahead, Jamel. Mm. You good? Oh, okay. First off, happy Mother's Day to all, all the mothers. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm just here to say, be grateful for my grandfather, Joseph yeah. Thomas. Yeah. Um. I'm not his actual blood son, but I am his son, <laughs> yeah, his grandson. Um, I had a lot of memories of my grandfather, but one that just came to mind uh, as he got older, uh, wasn't able to move around and stuff, bedridden. I was, I come shave his hair on Saturday nights. So this Saturday night, I'm coming to shave his hair. So I had to go to the bathroom to wet my, uh, it's called magic shave. It's a shaving cream that I apply, put on his face. So I go to the bathroom to get some warm water. When I come back, my grandfather fell asleep. <laughs> but he's going to sleep, but he's going to sleep like this. He has clippers in his hand. <laughs> when, I, when I wake him up, he do this here. He hit his pockets. Oh, I lay down. I say, what you doing, Papa? He say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
I thought I was cutting hair. I, said, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. My grandfather loved cutting hair. That's that's one thing I just wanted to say. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to Joseph Thomas. All right. Thank you, Jamel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And so we are still here and we're going to be wrapping up in just a little bit. But I have my sisters with me and Joby hasn't had an opportunity to share her memory. And now I have my eldest sister, uh, Pam. And so she's going to share. Also, we've just been talking about our memories, uh, not just of dad, but but dad and the barbershop or whichever mm -hmm. direction you want to go um, in this tribute. So um, Job has been sitting here long enough and she's had time to think. So we're going to give you time to think. And so we're going to let Joby go ahead. Okay. Uh, as far as the barbershop goes, like uh, they've already said, we all have been here from the day we were born and uh, still coming. And, uh, you know, dad has just been so funny because when we were little, Norm was younger than me, of course. He would bring a dresser drawer. And when she would get ready to go to sleep, he would lay her in the drawer. <laughs> So that was her crib. Back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, carrier, yeah. back in the day. Um, I don't know. I just have so many fun memories and not necessarily with the barbershop, but just he's just such a comical person. And uh, and it's just not a day that we goes by that we don't think of something, something that he exactly. said something. that makes exactly. us laugh. And I was yes. telling everybody, you know, telling people that we can't get sad because we can't be sad because we think about the fun things, the right, humor right, that he right. had. Uh, and it's just something because this is some other things. Uh, Dad was so funny that, uh, and I just thank God that it ever got to the point to where he didn't remember us. Mm -hmm. He always remembered who we were mm -hmm. and everything. You know, he might yes. forget, what day is it? You know, uh, and then I say, you know where you are? Yeah, I know where I am. I just look at that wall over there and I see my picture up there from that choir robe and I see this. So I know where I am. Uh, -huh. uh I have several uh, members that I've already planned that I want to speak on. So I hope I don't run out of time as well. <laughs> However, <laughs> uh, my mom died um, in 65, leaving four girls and um, leaving this man to raise four girls alone. Mm -hmm. As uh, I know many of you may have experiences in your families when someone dies and different family members would say, well, I'll take Pam or um, let, let me have Joby or uh, different ones, you know, was asking him. They never you know, to be uh, to stay <laughs> 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 to uh, to take one of us to help him, you know, lighten the load of raising four girls. But my father told them, no, I'm going to keep all of my girls. And he did a fantastic job as a single male parent. Indeed. indeed. Raising four girls. Indeed. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, he did yes. have, yeah, thank God for that. Uh, he had two jobs at the time, the barbershop as well as a bus driver, which they may have <laughs> said, I'm a little late, but uh, he may, they may have said that. But with those two jobs, he took care of us. And many times uh, we in conversation, we would talk about things that we had and, uh, you know, other kids didn't have them and, you know, we'd feel sorry for them. And, mm -hmm. and so my father, he said, well, y'all ain't got nothing either, <laughs> you know, but we always thought we were rich. <laughs> we thought we were rich because we never actually wanted for anything that we never. didn't get, uh, in our neighborhood. We were one of the first, uh, families on our street to get an indoor toilet mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, tub. And all of that, because back in that day, you know, we had the outdoor toilet. Right. Uh, we had one of the first ones to get television. Right. right uh, we right. always had a, a good car. And I never forget my father drove up one in 1959 with a brand new black and white Mercury. And, you know, that really made us think that we were really high <laughs> on the hog. And as children, you don't know what other families are going through. So you don't really know what's poor and what's rich. But we actually thought we were rich. Man, y'all were y'all poor too. I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> so that was one of the things. We never were in that uh, poverty state that we actually knew we were in poverty. True. You know, Absolutely. if we went private, Absolutely. we never knew that. Absolutely. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, in high school, you know, we would, when you'd go home uh, at the change of the year, you would go home with this uh, form to fill out for your parents to, okay, what subjects you were going to take the next mm -hmm. year. And so this particular year, I went home and by this time my mother was already gone. And so I said, Daddy, these are my subjects for next year. I need you to you have to sign off on them. And I had French, 
on there. And I can't remember what the other one, but I said, French, you ain't never going to France. You take Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I changed from French to Spanish. And I can't remember what the other subject was, but he said, why don't you take typing? Uh, you might be a secretary one day. I, said, I ain't going to be no secretary. As God would have it, I was a secretary for 35 years <laughs> in HISD, retired uh, with 38 years of HISD. So, I mean, he was just a real smart man. He just looked down the road, you know. The and word. then the, uh, the the other thing that I want to mention was my father was an entrepreneur. Yes, ma'am. And I think when I walked in, my sister might have been saying something, but he had all kinds of businesses mm -hmm. and he instilled in us to be an entrepreneur, okay? In our family, my sister has had her own school. She's had a, her own theater. Uh, she's had that. My other sister, she has a, a lawn, a cut yard thing. Landscaping. Landscaping. My nephews have their own trucking company. I have had uh, Pam and White, uh, Pam White's trucking company, as well as Pam and uh, Pam Flowers and Fragrances. I do Avon and I make baskets. And my daughter has her own business of decorating and for weddings mm -hmm. and parties and that kind of thing. So he instilled in us what he thought was necessary to have a good life. Right. As, right, as right. he was an entrepreneur and he brought in all of these, he did, we saw him and he instilled it in us and we too uh, became entrepreneurs. And I thank God for that. Right. Uh, so my father, he just, he was just all, an all around gentleman and he trained us up. When they say train up a child, he actually did yeah, that yes, he did. Uh, as well yeah. as he was uh, uh, a choir member at his church. And he uh, drove, he was over the bus ministry at his church for many years where he used his own van to pick up members from his church mm -hmm. to pick mm -hmm. them up for church. And if the church was going somewhere else, he would also ride in his uh, van. And these are the things that we do ourselves right now as, right. as, as a family. Right. So he right. taught us much love. Uh, he mm -hmm. taught us to love. And at this point in our lives, we everything we do is family oriented. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say I thank God for my dad. I had a hard morning this morning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's understandable. That's they understandable. They sung his, one of his songs at yeah, church. At church. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, at okay. church this morning, the male chorus did uh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And uh, that was his favorite song. So yeah. I kind of yeah. had a rough start. But yeah, I, I thank God for it. And listen, I thank uh, all of you guys for coming in. I think, uh, uh, Shiki, did you have something you wanted to say? Of course. Okay. And uh, her, that mic is still hot over there? Okay. okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm the oldest granddaughter, <laughs> the oldest grandchild, grandchild. Mm -hmm. and daughter. Mm -hmm. um, we grew up two girls at the beginning, me and Cam, and this... All these boys we had to fight on a daily basis, but <laughs> uh, but just like everyone else, I spent a lot of time up here at the barbershop. And um, just like my girls, every time I came in, I was trying to get a pickle <laughs> or a peanut patty, which I still love to this day. It is there very hard to find. Um, but he was always full of knowledge yes. and information. Yes. And just out of the blue, sometimes he would just ask a question. A lot of times I knew if he asked the question, he had some information he wanted to share to share mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. And um, we talked about one day um, I stopped by the house and I had just it was not too long. I think I had just had Tishany and um, it was on a Monday and um, I went over the I went to the house to get something. And he said, uh, um, so what's what's your plan? Mm -hmm. I said, what my plan to do what? I mean, what's what's your plan with your life? You got a new baby and what's your plan? I was like, well, Papa, I really don't really don't know. I think um, eventually I'm just going to get a job and and um, try to take care of my child. And he was like, that's a good plan. And he said, uh, what's your plan after that plan? And I was like, make, <laughs> so I was like, make money. <laughs> And he said, you got to have a plan after the plan because you don't know if that plan going to work out. <laughs> I said, you are so right, but I'm going to tell you, I do not have a plan after the plan. <laughs> but it always made me think, OK, if this does not work, what am I going to do? I always had those thoughts when, think, when I'm attempting to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking, if, they do, if this doesn't work, what am I going to do? And I just love the fact that he was such a calm, oh, 
oh being. God, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. He was so calm and even in, in his response when I was pregnant with Sean and I went, came up here and he was cutting hair and I walked over and I just kind of le- leaned his ear and I said, Papa, I'm pregnant again. And he turned and looked at me. Well, you just got to keep working again. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay. After the play. Yes. <laughs> but um, he never said, well, what you do that for? Why are you that? Never. It was never, never. you know, the, the beat up and the negative side of things. He was always trying to keep us pushing. And I just love him for that. And the yeah. comedian in him that oh, yes, God. we yes, all God. loved so much um, because he loved telling jokes. He just mm-hmm. loved keeping everybody's everyone laughing. Yeah, it's it's simple things like eating Sunday, eating dinner at the table mm-hmm. with him. And when you get through eating, you belch. Oh, no, no, don't belch. You might want some more. <laughs> <laughs> just those little things that we still say mm-hmm. in our daily lives mm-hmm. because he said it so often and kept us laughing yeah. so often yeah. and i just thank him for the love he gave us even when we had to move in when my mom had surgery when he got up and made breakfast for chris jamel and squatted for mm-hmm. school every morning he made breakfast for me too mm-hmm. um oh, i was always so some i was the babysitter um for the boys but he would always say what well, y'all boys move back let the ladies come eat first <laughs> <laughs> and he made the boys move back so i could get my food first and just those little things that Absolutely. I I remember. And to him, they were little, but I loved him so much mm-hmm. for them. Even when we all got in trouble for jumping in the bed, I whooped him first, but then I started jumping in the bed with him. I don't know why. And then Paul Paul came in and he beat them real good. And then he walked over me and hit me two times with the belt. Now y'all stop that. And the boys were like, what? <laughs> and cause he, I mean, he went, he wailed on them for a while till I was terrified. Cause in my mind, I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. They, they crying. He hit me one, two little times. And I don't know. Let me see y'all do that no more. I was like, oh, I'm good, you know. But um, just love him for the man, man. the man he was, mm-hmm. and loved him for the sensitive side of him that knew how to love Same. on girls. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yes. he was hard on the boys. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because he knew the man he was, and he was trying to bring that same man out, out of them, of but he was gentle on the girls and knowledgeable, mm-hmm. you know, on the girls as well. So that's my little spiel on Paw Paw today. Oh, and I was the you know, first to call him Paw Paw. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, she was. <laughs> and listen, uh, and thank you. Thank you, um, Shiki, for that. I almost called you Tishani. Thank you, Shiki. No, for can that. I say something? Yeah, just I, uh, uh, I forgot I wanted to mention that. Uh, this single man raising four girls, and then he also got one, two, three additional boys uh, in his life, uh, sent every one of us to college. Mm-hmm. Everyone had an opportunity to go to college, whether you finished or not. Yes. But he made it possible for for us to seek higher education so that we could have better jobs and a better Wake walk of life. You're at, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, and you didn't go to college empty handed. Mm-hmm. You didn't go empty handed. He had planned, mm-hmm. and he was yeah. talking to. I think it was you, she could just mentioned about him saying uh, that you always have a plan. He he even mm-hmm. like I said, and I mentioned the that uh, he was a sixth grade dropout. And I'm going to mm-hmm. say this, and then we're going to bring it to a close. He said that at the end of the school year, his teacher asked the question. If you have learned everything you think you're supposed to learn this year, then move over to the other side because it, it was like one room, uh, uh, one room schoolhouse. Mm-hmm. So all of the grades were in mm-hmm. one great big room. You know it was. And he was mm-hmm. like, if you've learned, then move on to the next section. And he was like, well, wait a minute. Hmm. I know I have learned everything that I could have learned this year. So he didn't move. And then when he realized that everybody else was moving. He said, he just decided, well, I guess I'm through. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, d- he did not go back. He went to work mm-hmm. and work he did. Mm-hmm. And he left us a legacy of mm-hmm. work, not just nine to five grinding at a job, not just trying to make um, a living, 
but to make a life. life. And that's what he left for us, a legacy and the life. And that's why we are here today. And that's why I say that he is the inspiration behind Shop Talk, the Barbershop podcast. And so we are here to say thank you. We are here to say um, we are so grateful and that we are dedicated to keeping his energy alive in this community because that's what he did. His reach was far and wide. And I know that it is my personal mission to continue that legacy. Mm -hmm. So we're going to raise our candles. Um, sure. Squally, did you have want something to say before we go? Um, I mean, only if you have something. I'm not no, trying to press the issue. Okay, well, then you got to make it quick come and come on. on. Let me move. Come here. And, and uh, right you want to hear? Uh, uh, say look. Well, I'm, can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Squally. I'm, that's my brother, Jamel, my oldest brother. He's no longer with us. That's my wife, my child. Um, you know, we were doing other things today, but I wanted to make sure I, we tried to stop by. Okay. Um, yeah, Joe Thomas was the, the grandfather, the father, mm -hmm. the everything to me, my brothers, and, and the rest of the family, anything that They've said, you know, it's probably already been said, but like I said, he was he was nice and sweet on them. He wasn't so sweet on us. <laughs> so the trouble that they got into, they might have got a slap on the wrist. The trouble we got into, we got the whooping whoop. <laughs> so it taught us how to be um tough men, yeah. taught us how to be um uh dedicated workers and to fathers to let your family know where you stand and how you love them. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he did to us. He let yes. us know where he stood and how much he loved us exactly. up until his last days when he wasn't working. That was my vacation. That was my road dog. So I would make sure and on my vacation, I'd come and get him. We spend our time and have us some time together. So, even when I wasn't on vacation, I was still on those days off. Yeah, it won't ride with Shiro. Mm -hmm. Go up there with him. It was just a lot of time spent. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I I miss those times, but I also have those memories. Mm -hmm. So and I'm happy for those memories that I do oh, have yeah. because yes. I find myself always looking back on them. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and um we're gonna bring our tribute to a close. And I just want to close with these words. Um, one of his favorite songs was uh, Moon River. <laughs> and in the song, he, there, there's something to the effect of, um, we're going to take this journey. We're going to take, take this journey together. And we're going to go, um, something to the effect of crossing the mile. I started to write the words down, but uh, to take that mile together. And so I just want to say that the spirit of Joe the Barber is in this place. It is alive and well in each one of us. And so we're going to keep going. We're going to take this journey, Moon River and me. Brother Nolan. Can I say something? Then no, you? you may not. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You do not know how much I appreciate your taking this journey with me. And so I have to say it's a wrap. Season one of Shop Talk Podcast is funded in part by a grant from the City of Houston through the Houston Arts Alliance.